Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and you know, I really hate it when a family breaks apart. Stop me if you heard this one before, but you got you and your siblings, you're taking on the world together, life's beating you down, you've got an ancient race of eldritch octopi enslaving your entire race, and then one day, you find a way to annihilate all those emo squid words and free your people from their tyranny, only for the ensuing argument over where you should go from there to create a schism between you and the rest of your family. See? I told you you've heard this one before. And so today, we will be talking about the faction of Gith that chose the superior way to live with their newfound freedom, the Gith Yankee. I'm gonna go over everything about the Gith Yankee as presented in Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes from their days freed from the Illithids and beyond, and as always, remember that a lot of this is just my opinion. But with that out of the way, let's begin. So if you've seen my Mind Flayer guide, then you know about how the Mind Flayers used the Gith race as slaves up until the Gith revolted and wiped out the entire Illithid civilization. It was at this point that the Gith had a choice to make. They could either continue their warmongering ways and move on to conquer the rest of the multiverse, or they could focus their efforts inward and seclude themselves from the world so that they could continue to nurture a better civilization than the one they were freed from. Ultimately, the two factions split apart, with the Warmongers naming themselves Gith Yankee, and the Seclusionists naming themselves Gith Zarai. The two groups decided henceforth to become mortal enemies, with battles raging whenever any Gith from opposing groups are brought together. But this video isn't about what the Gith have in common, it's about what's different. So let's take some time to focus on the peace and tranquility, boys, the Gith Zarai. In the time since they found their freedom, the Gith Zarai have found themselves under the banner of one particular Gith named Zerthamon, who used his wisdom-based skills of punching the fuck out of cephalopods to great effect during the Gith uprising. And when Gith, as in Gith the goddess of the Gith, eventually sought out the help of Tiamat to finish that uprising, Zerthamon was the first to proclaim, Wait, uh, that's a bad idea. To which the Gith loyal to Gith responded, Hey, what if we murdered you? This killing split the factions, and the followers of Zerthamon that would become the Gith Zarai moved away from their brethren to a nice home in the countryside of Limbo, where the never-ending chaotic storms would hide them so long as they kept their minds focused on drowning out the chaos and replacing it with enlightenment. Now Nowadays, the Gith Zarai are ruled by a mummified Gith named Menyar Ag, because normal names are impossible, and he leads the Gith Zarai in constructing mighty adamantine fortresses within the chaos of Limbo, where they stay and reside, content in leaving the rest of the world to its own devices, unless it involves halting the evil plans of either their estranged cousins the Gith Yankee, or the ultimate enemy, the Mind Flayers. From within these citadels, Gith Zarai act as peaceful farmers and monks, using their psionic powers to manipulate the swirling tides within Limbo and shape them into whatever the Gith Zarai could want. This ultimate creative control over the world around them actually leads to some culture shock when Gith Zarai venture off outside of Limbo and into the material plane to find everything so fixed in its own existence, unmoldable and obstinate like the creatures that inhabit it. That's why when the Gith Zarai do end up going out traveling, they shunt one of their adamantine citadels, which only ends up causing the rest of the material plane to flip the fuck out, since things from Limbo, like the citadel that they're shunting into the material plane, carry an aura of death within them that causes all natural life to either leave or wither and die. So while the Githzerai aren't out to downright make anybody's life worse, they do have a habit of being off-putting and disturbing just by their appearance in a given place, which is unfortunate because their preferred interaction with the rest of the multiverse is to be docile monks that teach the ways of Zerthamon and warn slash protect against the dangers of both the Gith Yankee and the Mind Flayers. But their constant exudance of macabre Far Realm spooky time power resonance means that they will never truly connect with the world the way that they would want to. Finally, there are a sect of Gith called the Shasal Ko that work within both the Gith Yankee and the Gith Zarai to reunify the factions into one big Gith race, and while they haven't been gaining the amount of traction that they might want, they still hold a presence on the material plane, hoping to one day bring the Gith back into their former glory. But if you felt like joining in the ranks of the monks that kick ass for the whole multiverse, then you're looking for the stats of the Gith Zarai. Gith Zarai get a bonus to both intelligence and wisdom, advantage on saving throws against being charmed and frightened, and they can cast the Mage Hand cantrip, with the hand being invisible, along with having spells like Shield and Detect Thoughts, all of these being cast using wisdom and acting as psionic abilities that Gith just inherently have. Now, there really is no use for having bonuses in both intelligence and wisdom out of basic role-playing, but the idea of the Gith Zarai has always been to be a monk, so giving them a bonus to intelligence at least gives you a wider selection of what type of magic caster you might want to be if you choose to go down that route. Magic spells are pretty neat, especially since they all have very practical applications, and being resistant to fears and charms along with being able to cast shield naturally means that while you may not be an offensive powerhouse, you're skill set will keep you focused and ready for what's to come. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a bunch of words that I always get tired of saying. Subscribe if you can't get enough of me talking forever, and maybe support me on Patreon to pay for the damages caused by someone spawning their adamantine citadel on my house. But yeah, Davy out.